When I began experimenting with synthesized textures, a lot of it was random knob twisting and button pushing, which in all honesty isn't a bad way to begin. It's easy to get intimidated by the many, many parameters on even the simplest of synthesizers, so a little fearless knob twisting never hurt anybody. Because of that perceived complexity, lots of people depend solely on presets when they compose, which is a completely valid approach. Personally, I think presets are marvelous things. The people who get hired to put those knobs in those places are very good at what they do, and in a lot of ways, it's like standing on the shoulders of a giant. They've already taken us so far, and it's really up to us to follow our ears and take it that final distance. I know firsthand how frustrating it can be when you find a sound which is close to what you're looking for, but not exactly right, and you don't know how to create what you're hearing. So that's the info I want to provide you with. This isn't going to teach you everything there is to know about music synthesis, but I want to give you the tools to start being effective and take your ideas to the finish line. Let's start with signal flow and see the pathway a sound travels inside of Equator. Pull up preset number 63 named Clicky Organ and let's take a closer look. At its most basic level, sounds are just vibrations. If we go back to the violin analogy, it's pretty clear how that vibration is being made. A bow is running across a string causing friction which creates a vibration and that vibration can be visualized in a waveform. In a synthesizer, whether it's digital or analog, the thing that's creating the vibration is referred to as an oscillator. Some synthesizers only have a single oscillator, and Equator has three. Each one outputs its own distinct waveform, and layered together, you can create very complex and rich sounds. If I click here on any of the waves shape in any of the oscillators, you can see that there are many different types of waveforms to choose from. Equator is also generating sound by using audio samples of other instruments, and those too have distinct waveforms you can select from this drop-down menu. The last sound source is the noise generator, which works exactly the way it sounds. It creates a sort of static noise. All of these sound sources move from their point of origin into filter 1 and 2. Synthesized sounds are very bright and harsh, so a huge part of sound design is filtering out the frequencies that you do not want to hear. The most common filter you see on a synthesizer is what's referred to as a low-pass filter, which is a filter that is letting the low frequencies pass through, but not the highs. If I was going to rename this, I would call it a high no-pass filter, because the name can sometimes be confusing. Here on filter 1, we can see a visual representation of that low pass frequency filtration and swap it out for any of the other options here. Mostly you can deduce what the filters would do to a sound by the way they're shaped. As you can see, each of the samples and the noise generators has their own independent filters, which they will pass through before they hit filter one and filter two, which we can turn on and off at any point as well. Really the knob on any filter, which you're gonna wanna mess with is the cutoff. And most often than not, you'll find it mapped to one of the gestures in Equator's presets. Basically, cutoff equates to brightness, and the lower the cutoff frequency, the less frequencies will make it through the filter, and vice versa. If you have a high cutoff, the more frequencies are passing through the filter, and the brighter the sound. After the filters, the sound runs through this built-in effects chain, where we can tweak all sorts of stuff and shape the sounds even more. All of the audio effects are running as inserts on a return track, except for the reverb, which is running on its own separate return. This means that the signal flow in this area is a one-way street, and whatever is coming into this section is running through each effect one after the next, and we adjust the amount by reducing the level or wet amount on any of these effects. That leads me to the mixer section, which is where we can determine how much of each sound source is running through which filter and so on. If we click on the mixer up here, we'll be able to see how things are flowing. Vertically, each sound is represented, similar to a mix window in a DAW. And you can see that the oscillators, samples, and noise generator here. You can also access the ring modulator, which you don't see in Equator's main panel. If you hover anywhere over the horizontal representation of what's passing through the filter, it highlights the signal flow for you. How far a knob is turned up on any section is equivalent to the amount of signal that's being sent to that area. For this preset, everything that's coming in through filter 1, which is 100% of each oscillator and sample, then gets sent to filter 2, which is currently turned off. Then that runs through the effects chain, 
and it looks like we have 100% of that filtered sound running through the effects chain. And we have a gain control over the output of those effects. And then it runs into the reverb and then to the final main output. If you look over here, you can see that a small amount of the signal coming from sample one is getting sent straight to the effects chain, bypassing the filters, and also some of the signal is being sent completely dry with no filtration or effects processing straight to the output. You can create nice blends of affected and dry signals this way. Whichever part of the chain you hover over on the left, Equator will show you the pathway that the signal is taking to the master output. A metaphor I like to use for signal flow and one that I picked up from another Berkeley professor is to compare digital signal flow to a city's water system. First, it falls from the sky in some form of precipitation, which would be our oscillators, samples, and noise generator. Then it makes its way into some sort of reservoir or lake and gets sent to a filtration center where any dirt and unwanted stuff gets taken out, which would be the many filters we have on Equator. Then it goes through a process where certain things are added, like disinfectants to make it drinkable, or fluoride for our teeth, and those would be the effects processors. Lastly, it travels from the filtration center through a complex underground system and comes out of our faucets at home, which is our main output. Signal flow is one of those things which can take a while to really grasp, but it's a hugely important thing to understand. And it's not just in a digital sense, but in any setting where a sound needs to travel from one place to another, whether it's an electric guitar on stage or a very powerful soft synth like Equator running through a digital audio workstation. With the mixer open, browse through some of the other presets and see how their signal is being routed inside of Equator. Once you find one that looks and sounds interesting to you, try messing around with the amount of signal being sent to or bypassing the filters and see how that affects the sound. Then try turning up the gain output on the effects chain, and the reverb, or the dry signal and see what those results are like. Don't forget to save any interesting sounds you create into your library.